Let's take a couple of moments and we're going to walk through the system settings menu on your new Pioneer Nex in-dash receiver. Even though your particular in-dash receiver may have buttons on the side or across the bottom like this one, the on-screen operation in this demonstration is identical for the following Pioneer Nex models. AVH1300 Nex. AVH1330 Nex. MVH2300 Nex. AVH2300 Nex. AVH2330 Nex. AVH3300 Nex. So from any source, and right now we're on the AM FM radio source, we're going to touch the gears and we want to go to the toolbox. And under the toolbox we have our system settings. So the first thing we see here is the AV source settings. So let's open that window. And under the AV source settings, we have a bunch of different settings that there are individual videos that exist for this. So if you're looking for the mix track settings, a detailed video, that's available in its own video for mix tracks. The same thing with the radio settings, either the RDS version of the tuner or the HD radio version of the tuner. Those uh, are individual videos that are available. Same thing with Sirius XM. Now the bottom two on the list here are very important. Here's Bluetooth Audio and Spotify. And here we can switch both of these things on or off. So right now I've switched off both Bluetooth Audio and Spotify. Let me show you what that means. If I touch the home button, that takes me out to my home screen and you can see that Bluetooth here is grayed out. I can't get to it. And if I open the AV window, I can't even find Spotify in my list. Those things are gone because I just switched them off in the uh, system setting list. So let's go back out to the system settings here. There's the toolbox and back into the AV source settings. And we'll switch Bluetooth audio on and we'll switch Spotify on. I like to use both of those things. And since I like to use them, I want them in my source list. So I'm going to touch the home button again here. And you can see that there is Bluetooth audio lit up and ready to go. When we open the AV window, you can see that Spotify is available there now as well. So let's go back to our system settings. And next up is the beep tone. Every time I touch a button on the screen here, you can hear the beep tone. If you don't want to hear that beep tone, it's very easy to switch it off. Uh, now when I touch the screen, you won't hear the beep. I like to hear that beep tone, so I'm going to keep the beep tone switched on. Next up is Auto Mix, and here we can switch Auto Mix on or off. And Auto Mix is a very simple setting for when you're using a, uh, a smartphone connected up to the system and you're operating apps in Pioneer's app radio mode. With app radio mode, the system can automatically mix the audio from the apps that are operating on the phone with an AV source like AM FM radio or satellite radio or whatever you choose. You can have the uh, system automatically mix those two sources or you can choose to operate them yourself. For right now, I'm going to set Auto Mix to On. Next up is our input and output settings. So we'll touch that to open it up. And the first thing we see up here is USB MTP. This refers directly to Android phones. Certain Android phones can be plugged in through the uh, USB connection and we can access files on those uh, Android phones through MTP or Media Transfer Protocol. If you like to do that, you want to have USB MTP switched on. However, please note that if you use uh, Android Auto or App Radio Mode, this may disconnect those type of connections. So we're going to say cancel to that right now, and I'm going to uh, leave USB MTP turned off. Next up is our App Radio Mode Sound, and right now App Radio Mode Sound is switched to AVH. We can also choose to switch it to smartphone. And this again refers directly to Android phones if we're using App Radio Mode, Pioneer's App Radio Mode, to operate external apps on the system. We can have the sound from those external apps played directly through the smartphone speaker, or the sound can play through the in-dash receiver. For right now, I'm going to have that sound play through the in-dash receiver. If you use an iPhone, the sound will always play through the in-dash receiver. Next up is our AV input, and right now you can see it is switched off, and we have auxiliary input are also switched off. Now this refers directly again to the source settings. We'll go out and take a look here. 
Here's auxiliary input, it's grayed out, and AV input is grayed out because we have them switched off in the, uh, in the, in the settings menu. So we'll go back to the settings menu and our input output settings and we are going to switch them on. So AV input is selected as a source and auxiliary input is switched on. Now when we go out and check the, uh, the AV source list, you can see that they're both available. Auxiliary input is available and AV input is available. We're going to scroll down a little bit here and next up is our camera settings. Now there's a full video for the camera settings so please uh, if you're interested in the camera settings check out the full camera settings video. Next up is the demo mode and we can switch the demonstration mode on or off right here and with the demo mode when you uh, turn the in-dash receiver off the demo demonstration mode will take over and show you some images of the capabilities of the system. Uh, I like to keep the demonstration mode turned off. Let's scroll down a little further here. And next up is our system language. When you first set up the system, you can choose a number of different languages. You could change them here as well. Please be sure that you can read that language before you change to that language. So I'm going to choose English for right now. Now you can see uh, the next uh, bunch of the settings are all grayed out. I can't get to them. In order to get to them, we need to engage the parking brake. So there I've engaged the parking brake and next thing we see here is restore settings. Now if you've installed the system and you need to uh, set all of the things back to the factory settings, you can do that by choosing all settings here and it's like you took your AVH receiver right out of the box and you have to choose a language and choose do you want uh, network, network mode or standard mode, all of that right from the beginning. This is how you reset the system. Right here you can see my car settings which is grayed out and this refers to uh, the system if you are using the optional iDatalink Maestro RR OEM integration unit. So we'll go back up here, we'll scroll down a little further. Uh, next up is keyboard, and keyboard is grayed out because I don't have a smartphone connected right now. If you have a phone connected, you have an option to change the keyboard to a different language or keyboard setting. Next up is our touch panel calibration, and if you want to go through the process of adjusting the touch panel for uh, finer calibration, you can do that here. I strongly recommend to you to sit, if you typically sit in the driver's seat when you operate the in-dash receiver, sit in the driver's seat when you do your calibration. Right now we're going to say no and go back up. Next up is uh, the dimmer settings and again there is a full video on the dimmer settings where you can uh, learn about the three different ways to trigger the dimmer to switch on and off. We'll go back up here. Our driving position is left. Most uh, North American vehicles will use the driving position on the left. You can change that if you want. Let's see, next up is Android Auto, Auto Launch. If you're an Android phone user and you like to use Android Auto, you can have it automatically switch into Android Auto mode when you plug in the phone. If you don't want that to happen, you can choose to switch Android Auto Launch off. Now, if you plug in your phone and it's not switching directly to Android Auto, it's possible that you have switched this off in the settings. So be sure to take a look at that. I'm gonna leave mine on for right now. Next up is the picture adjustment. We'll open that window. And with picture adjustment, we can adjust the, uh, the picture on the screen, the brightness, the contrast, the dimmer, and so forth, uh, based on the source is what we're looking at right now. And if we want, we can check the rear view camera as well where we have options to change that. So depending on what you're looking at, the source or the rear view camera, you can make individual adjustments. We'll go back up. And next up is our system information. Uh, and firmware information, this is a very important one. Occasionally a firmware update will be issued for the system and you can download that firmware update from pioneerelectronics.com. Uh, if you have a firmware number, and this tells you your current firmware number installed in the in-dash receiver, if you have a number lower than 8.26, there is at least one firmware update available for your system. This also advises you of the device number of this particular in-dash receiver. We'll go back up. Finally, at the bottom here, we have the OEM settings and OEM volume settings. And this is for use with the optional iDatalink Maestro RR OEM integration unit. When you're done making adjustments to the system settings, you can just hit the X to escape.